All right, well, I did the multiplication on my phone, and 23 times 12 is something like 276. My score crunch goes to 250, and you're not supposed to use a certain percentage of the top end and the bottom end of a torque wrench. I don't remember what the number is, however. Uh, so I decided to see what 21 times 12 is, and that's like 252 or some, something like that. So I'm going to shoot for 250, which is the absolute top end of the scale, and hope it's not that accurate, and I go a little bit over. Well, I know I'm going to go a little over. So that's supposedly 250, supposedly. So we'll give it a little, that's about, I don't know, 276, give or take a foot pound or two, or inch pound or two rather. And these, uh, these leads for the switch, they seem to go on a certain way, like they have a thin side and a, and a real thick side. And they seem to fit They seem to fit in a very particular way. Oh, did I really leave that in there? And why am I losing? Oh, well, whatever. Shit happens. If it leaks, I know what to do wrong. Yeah, don't use uh, regular, like, brake clean on, on the peanut parts on your, like, directly on the peanut parts of your bike, because uh, it doesn't work to your advantage at all. So I spray it on a rag and I wipe it on real quick and then wipe it right off again. And the only reason I'm doing this right here is because I need to make sure that I don't have any leaks when I uh, bleed the brakes. And for me, the way I do that, if I find any of my freaking tools, I have to take off this mount from my exhaust. Oh, by the way, it, the exhaust is already off the bike because I'm... Um, I was doing a push rod adjustment, and uh, what else was I doing? Uh, oh, I was trying to make up mounts for mid mounts for this bike because I really want to put mid mounts on it. Really bad. I really wish I had power tools right now. So you know. It's two bolts on this, and it's, it's a Vanson Hines. Let's see if you can see it here. It's actually a Vanson Hines. I think it's a short shot. I really don't like it. The uh, the shields, they have little cincy retainer plates that keep cracking off. So I keep having to weld them back on. I definitely want to get it like a two into one on this bike. I just don't know what yet. I, I haven't really looked into it. Even the cheap ones are like 650 bucks or something like that. But I definitely want to put a two and a one on the bike. I have a lot of, I have a lot of stuff I'd like to do to this bike. Just to make it mine, I guess. So that's your master cylinder cover. And usually I just wipe the paint right off the master cylinder cover. Son of a bitch. Damn it. Alright, whatever. Yeah, you can see that's uh that's what brake fluid seeping out of the gasket does to you. And that's just like a number two screwdriver. Ain't nothing like that. Let's see if I can find one. That'd be awesome. Score, not score. They put these things in a really spot that I don't really appreciate very much. I'm sure my dogs would love to go for a walk before it starts raining. So I'm going to try and make this as quick as I can. I'm going to get back on my bike and hope they have uh, her brakes. That would be freaking sweet. Riding around like I said for a year with no back brakes because I was uh, too lazy to look at it. Yeah, you see that's cracking all the paint off of the cover. I think it's calm. I'm really not going to sweat it very much. I really wish I had my flashlight. Can't tell if that fluid's all contaminated. Let me uh let me go grab my flashlight. I 
Well, it's pretty clean. I thought it would be a lot worse than that, to be honest with you. Um, I did flush it a handful of times not that long ago. I'm probably not going to have a piece of hose for that. Gosh. I'm really not prepared in the least little bit for this. I probably should have like thought this through and been like, hey, it would be intelligent to have a piece of hose so you're not bleeding your brakes all over your back tire. usually have stuff laying around here uh, but I don't know where said stuff might be at this point in time because I stopped cleaning up my bed. so I'm going to just have to get stuff all over the back side that might be inevitable at this point you know, I'll just have to roll it out in the rain and pray for a wall that side and pray that stuff rain you know Peter So there's a bleeder on top of the caliper, uh, which you guys can't see. So there's a bleeder right, uh, where's it? Right there. That's a bleed screw. So the way I generally tend to do this is I block the camera so you can't see first. So this is supposed to be, I think, a 3 8 wrench. It's supposed to be a 3 8 wrench, but uh, it overheated and it broke. So it is no longer a 3 8 wrench. So, where is my little fancy dancy guy? It's supposed to be like a one size fits all deal. It's supposed to be real good for stuff like this. Oh, look at that. It doesn't work for that either. So that's worthless. I should have probably just bought a caliper. It's not being cheap. Because now I'm absolutely going to destroy this blade drop. Ah, beautiful. So, my general thing with this is I should have a hose. I don't. I wish I had a freaking hose. Usually I'll take a piece of hose and put it on the bleeder and run it down to like here and just dump it into a pan. It makes my life a whole lot easier. That rubber hose I just had that I already lost isn't the correct size. Well, I don't think it's a correct size. It might work. Damn it. Oh, sweet. It'll work once I make it the right size. Or at least that's how it looks. That used to be a lot of Yes, I got a trophy. One more thing I have to list. Alright, please fit, please fit. That kind of sort of fits. Alright, so now I need to catch it here. Where's my. It's literally open the bleeder. Please open the bleeder. Or don't. Whatever. Oh, you son of a bitch, yeah. There you go. Literally open the bleeder with the master cylinder cover off. Push down until it stops. Close the bleeder. Let up. Wait a second. Open the bleeder. 
push down, close it, let up, and then look at the level. Oh, that worked perfect. I think I was fucking dunk. And just make sure you got fluid in there. That's all you're doing. Make sure it maintains a level of fluid that uh, covers up the hole or the pickup in the bottom of the reservoir. That's all I'm trying to do. And this is dot four fluid. Uh, so, yeah. I'm assuming I'm gonna have to push through a bunch of flow because uh, where I open the system, oh shit, this is already open. Where I open the system up is pretty, uh, pretty close to the reservoir, so I'm assuming it's gonna take a little while. Um, I have heard you can do like the pump it up like a, with a car, pump it up, crack the bleeder deal. I haven't had much luck with that to be honest with you, so I usually tend to do it this way. Um, I'm kind of curious if I do pump it up because I do see air bubbles coming out here. So I wonder if I do pump it up. Crack. Close you, you are making a mess. And the pedal keeps getting higher and higher. So my general rule of thumb is uh, if I can pump it and get the pedal to run higher. Then uh, I still got air in the system. I can still see bubbles coming up, up here. Down here, rather, I'm sorry. Uh, the way bubbles usually tend to work is they usually travel to the highest point. Usually. No, I'm by no means a. Uh, there's still fucking air in this or shit. Rocket science when it comes to Harleys. I work on cars for a living, which doesn't take much fucking thought, but. I'll be able to keep some back brakes here. Oh, look at that. My brakes work. Oh, sweet. That's so nice to have a back brake now. Well, to have a brake light, rather. You now, someone rear ends me. I could be like, yeah, fuck off. I'm hoping that was the only leak. I don't I don't think it's gonna be, but I'll fix it, you know, one thing at a time. As I see problems, I'll keep fixing them. It's not a big deal to me. There we go. Now we're getting a better pedal. Yeah, I was trying to pump it up thing, and that's I don't I've never had luck with that with bikes. And if you watch, I wonder if I can get this. If you watch on uh let's see if I can figure out a place to put you. No, man down. You, you stay. This thing's supposed to stay anyway. There you so if you watch this tube, I don't know. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. So it's pretty much like the fluid stops there. The pressure on the pedal. You can see a couple air bubbles roll out. I don't know if you can see that or not. Fair to try and give it a shot. But that's uh, you know, it's, it's an 08 uh, FXDF Dynafat Bob. Uh, I love this bike. I've already actually built the trans in it because it took took out second gear. You know, I really wanted to do a video on that, but I never got a chance to. And I scrapped the parts already. Son of a bitch. Well, it, it was uh, what was it? A dog ring. I think it's called a dog ring. At least I don't remember the name of the parts. It's pretty much like art uh, in an automotive uh, setup. Uh, Automotive World, it's a, uh... okay, maybe I'm going to edit this one, because I really suck at the camera stuff. Yes, you suck so bad, Corvo. So in the Automotive World, I think the parts I put in the trains are like a, comparable to a shift work synchronizer, uh, and a freewheeling gear. Uh, the bearings were good, stuff like that, it wasn't bad, it was just, for some reason, I don't know if the previous owner rode the clutch or uh, the shifter a lot, or maybe it just wasn't set up correctly for me, and I was riding it without really noticing it. 
but it put a lot of premature, like a lot of premature wear on the shift fork. So I, uh, last year I probably, I mean, I bought the bike last year. Last year probably a month and a half, two months in owning it, I lost second gear. So I rode the rest of the season just hopping over second gear. So first to third, uh, which wasn't too bad considering the torque these bikes make, but it was still kind of aggravating. So uh, now I have all my gears. There we go. And uh, it just it runs a whole lot better now, to be honest with you. So I'm glad it does. I did adjust the valves. Whoever put the cams in didn't adjust the one uh, intake valve or intake push rod rather correctly. So it was holding the valve open a little bit. Hopefully the bike runs a little better. I still got to put all that stuff back together, uh, get the exhaust back on, and pray to God this is the only problem with the back brace for now at least. I gotta put a back tire on the bike this year. I might do a front tire. I have a lot of plans for this bike. I really do. I do enjoy this bike a lot. So I want to try and take care of it, but uh, it's a lot of a lot of stupid shit. So we'll see how that goes. So I figured I'd start doing more videos. This isn't necessarily what I always do, but this is what I've been uh, spending most of my time doing: is riding or fixing this or you know, something motorcycle related. So hopefully when the winter comes and gets too cold to ride, I'll be back into the normal stuff. But we'll see what happens. So I'll see you guys around.